Good world gone bad. Righty ho, in the Renault. Stand up in this. Uh, I've been driving this for. I don't even know how long now. Too long. It's, it's not a bad truck. It's just. It's not very well thought out, in my opinion. Yes. But I'll give you a little tour since I'm a, I'm a bit familiar with it now. And to think, not that long ago, driving an unfamiliar truck was this truck. Well, that is a lack truck, you know, basic model, this one as well. No uh, fancy gadgetry for your phone. Oh, by the way, while we're on the subject, whoever told me to buy one of these, lifesaver. I can actually listen to my own stuff, anyway. Uh, start inside. Waiting for power. Top bank, fold it up. Bottom bank. Storage down there, bit of storage here where someone's just dumped a lot of crap and storage there. That one's also from the side locker as well, I don't think that one, no that, that one isn't. But there we are. And here we have the bed. With a bit of storage beer. Ooh, cup holder. You know those, eh? Not that deep. I wouldn't use that. But, uh, yes, back here. Standard, you know, night heater controls, cigarette sockets, and bit of dirt. That's pretty much it for the back. For the back end of the cab. Oh. Passenger seat. Is uh, it's on air? Ooh. Yes, it's on air. Armrest, very nice. Still not convinced if I like this pattern on the fabric. And it's alright. Well, nothing too special. <coughs> I see reading lamps. You all know that. Uh, sort of nothing much. <coughs> I'm looking for the fuse box. Ow! Is it my head or not? I'm looking for the fuse boxes back here somewhere. Fuse boxes underneath but there. Yeah, if you're looking here, you've got a cigarette socket. So I plug that little doohickey in. Little bit of storage. It's not that deep, as you can tell by my hand. And top cupboard. It's all right, enough room. Bit of wasted space up here, I think. But uh, yeah, middle cupboard, bit smaller. Sort of bottom one. Again, not much space in that one. Again, by my hand, it's just about wrist deep. That's the only one you can lock as well. So if you've got a lot of stuff and you, uh, you're a tramper and you leave and you leave stuff in your over over the weekend or whatever, someone wants to have your truck, that's the only one you can actually lock. But yeah, again, standard. Just prip. About the same size as that one. Got a tackle head. Good, I thought I wasn't on break there for a second. Uh, stereo, basic stereo in this one. No Bluetooth, no auxiliary. If you did have an auxiliary, it would go there, which is a kind of bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, I don't know what that does. It looks important, so I don't want to touch it. But anyway, that's a sunroof. And you're reversing alarm. This one doesn't even have one of them. The C driver has two lovely armrests. Not just the one, not just the one. I keep looking at myself again. We're doing that again, okay. Yes, there's also a little thing be by the bunk. Keep uh, odds and sods, you know. I'm gonna pull that out the way just in case I reveal too much again. Uh, control console. You got your lift, lift the axle, drop the axle. Weight transfer, you know, you know the drill by now. A uh, little bit of storage, like fill card, whatever. Hill hold, automatic exhaust brake, trailer control. So if you're below three kilometers a mile, below three kilometers an hour, I believe that press that and it puts the trailer brakes on without the unit brakes. Uh, traction control, lock the passenger doors. Uh, 
uh, night lights and floodlights. That's the handbrake. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but I've kind of gotten used to it now, so it's alright. Hazards. Right, this thing is a bit of a pain in the ass. It's the cruise control. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. The, the initiation for the cruise control, I suppose. Like you get in, it's for there. Uh, Grayed out. That means nothing selected. Cruise. Anti clockwise. Limiter. Clockwise. If you guys remember my unfamiliar truck video, I struggled with that because I didn't know where it was. Because under the steering wheel right here is a little button. And that's uh, selecting up and down on the cruise control. A huge pain in the ass when you don't know it's there. Took me a while. And uh, on the other side of the steering wheel, you got a little wheel, and it's also a button. It's from controlling things on the actual dash menu. Yeah, that wheel is for controlling things, like playing it now on the menu beer. So, no. Yeah, go to the tackle graph, right. When you press it, you can, for this for, for this example, set when the, the reminder to have your breakers. I don't know why you go as low as five minutes. I've cut it a bit fine now. So if I, I have a set to 30. So 30 minutes before my four and a half, it'll pop up with a message saying, uh, take a break. Yeah. Adjust the steering wheel. There's a little button down here. Press it down, unlock, put it back up. Can't really adjust it that much, which is one thing I really don't like about it. But anyway, back over here, you got your standard climate controls. Goes up half a degree. Air conditioning and all that, like your night heater. On the higher spec model, there is a couple more options there, but I can't really remember what they are now because I haven't driven it for a while. Down by you as well, you got a little draw, keep uh, whatever. There's a cab phone they gave me. That has never been unboxed. Bit of pointless. And you got your cigarette sockets, two, two 12 volt beer, 124 volt per there. That one's always on. And uh, these don't actually work, so the fuse is blown in this one, so. Yes. The fuse is blown and when they replaced it, it blew straight away again. So there's an under underlying problem with that, but they won't fix it because it's just a cigarette socket. And also a little cup holder that you can't really hold anything in. Yes, light light cluster. Uh, just twist it. Adjust the height of the beam. And you got so front fog lights, working light, and rear fog lights. This is the steering wheel itself. Uh, cruise control options: off, resume, whenever it's set to, and then set speed one and set speed two. On this side, that's just the menu control. I think there's phone controls there on the more uh, high spec models as well. Yeah, and that's about it for the inside, anyway. Not, uh, not too much going on about it. Not too much going on. Like I said, that uh, little USB, uh, Bluetooth cigarette socket thing, that's, that's been a godsend. Wh whoever recommended that to me, thank you so much. So I used to have them. I plugged in my phone, my uh, my old iPhone 4, and just played off that, but I haven't, I haven't found one that plugs into my new phone. So I've just been using my old phone for like, two years now. But uh, since again this one, I just can't be asked to carry two phones with me. And that worked better than the other one I ever did, so thank you so much for that. Uh, should we look at the outside? You know what it looks like. It looks a bit ugly. And quite dirty. Haven't really been washing this one. To be fair, I only found out two days ago where we can actually wash them. And I'm going nowhere near those today or tomorrow. Tomorrow potentially might be my last day. I'm not sure. I suspect I'll be back soon anyway. Anyway, let's have a look at the outside. There you go, you got three steps into the cab. Three steps to heaven. Please ignore the mess. It's not the cleanest work, this job. And uh, what was your suspension controls as well? Try not to get the trailer in. <laughs> and there's the front. Not the prettiest lorry, is she? Although I do like uh, like the aerodynamic functions, but uh, it's kind of growing on me. 
Yes, there she is. <laughs> I really can't show the trailer. <laughs> I don't know how much usable footage I just got from outside there because I can't show you the trailer. I'm too lazy to drop it, okay? Quite a few of you spotted me on the road anyway, so you know what it says anyway. <laughs> I'm pretty, and I'm pretty sure you can work it out without any problem whatsoever as well. But uh, if you can't, for those who can't, I'm sorry. Sort of. But yes, yeah, so that, I keep doing these truck tours. And I keep thinking I've rushed through them way too quickly. This is no exception. Yeah, uh, in summary, it's not a bad truck. It does pull pretty well. This isn't only a 460 basic model. But it's just the layout of things. You know, it's... I keep comparing it to the old premium, the old Renault premium. I think it's better. I think. I put the exhaust brake on my right side now. On the premium, it was on the left down here, which was a bit annoying because everyone has it on the right. But uh, yeah, that, so that's an improve. So that's an improvement. Uh, it's got a lot more room in it, although I'm not going to jump in this one because I will hit my head. It's not like the DAF. <laughs> It just kind of feels a bit plasticky, you know? But again, it's a very, very basic model. This one's only a rental anyway. And there's my breakdown, so I will I'm gonna end this now. Uh, future truck tours, let me know what you'd like to see. Bear in mind, I have no idea what I'm driving from day to day, more or less. <laughs> and I very rarely get Scania, so I'm glad I did that Scania one like last year when I did one. New Volvo, haven't had one of them yet. Aveco, never driven in the Aveco Arctic. Right, if you like this video and you want to see more truck tours and blah de blah de blah, trailer tour, do you want a trailer tour? I'll give you a trailer tour maybe one time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, leave, a, leave a comment on what you want to see, blah blah blah, blah. tell me how. Actually, yeah, not too bad actually. It wasn't too bad until I did that. Anyway, uh, yeah. Leave a comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, see you in a bit.